I've been using the WaveShare 7600 4G for the Jetson Nano. It gives the Jetson a connection to 4G mobile networks so that it can send and receive phone calls and SMS and also gives it location capabilities such as GPS. Now if you are looking to get on a Wi-Fi connection I do have another video about that that you can find within the description. Now the WaveShare 7600 4G is built around a an integrated circuit known as the SimCom 7600. And that's used for providing mobile communications functionality to other devices. WaveShare makes variations of this device for both the Raspberry Pi and the Jetson Nano. And while there's a wide amount of overlap in both the devices, there are also differences that are not immediately apparent from the top level documentation. That said, reading the documentation for one does give insight into the other. The pin assignments used are different, but most of the functionality is the same. Now, when I initially looked at the WaveShare 7600 4G for the Jetson, there are some elements that didn't make sense to me immediately. I had to consult both documentation from the chip maker themselves, along with looking at a schematic that was provi provided by WaveShare in order to make sense of some things. Now, you don't need to be familiar with the electrical schematic uh, for the WaveShare in order to use the board. But looking at it can be helpful. Here I have a pinout diagram for the SimCom 7600 integrated circuit. From looking at the pin labels, you can see some of the functionality that the chip supports. There are pins for power control, USB, data transfer, integrating with an SD card, a GNSS, flight mode, I2C, a UART interface, functionality concerning batteries, and analog to digital conversion. While the SimCom 7600 supports all of these interfaces, the WaveShare board that's built around it only supports a subset of these interfaces. Some of the lines of the SimCom 7600 are not connected with an external interface through the WaveShare board. The schematic that WaveShare provides is available on their wiki at this URL. In the center of the schematic, you see the representation for the SimCom 7600. Looking at this part of the diagram, you might notice that the pins labeled SEL and SDA are both tied to positive voltage sources instead of to other circuitry. These labels are associated with the I2C interface. Since the WaveShare board does not bridge the I2C pins of the Jetson Nano and the SimCom 7600, there's effectively no I2C that you can use with this board. So let's take a look at how WaveShare's device connects to the Jetson Nano 40 pin header. Here, you can see that the WaveShare board connects to some voltage and ground lines on the 40 pin interface. The only pins related to signaling are pins 8 and 10 on the Jetson Nano, which connect the Jetson Nano's UART to the SimCom 7600's UART, and pins 31 and 33 on the Jetson Nano, which connect to the pins labeled D6 and D13 on a WaveShare board. Let's trace these connections. The two UART lines don't directly connect to the SimCom 7600. Instead, they pass through a pair of switches and an integrated circuit with this designation. According to the data sheet, this circuit is a level shifter. This circuit isn't providing any additional signaling. It allows the SimCom 7600, which uses 1.8 volt signaling, to communicate with the Jetson Nano, which uses 3.3 volt signaling. Now, the two switches uh, allow the SimCom 7600 UART and the Jetsons UART to be disconnected from each other. It is also possible to connect directly to the 3.3 volt side of this integrated circuit through some pins that are exposed on the board. There's a representation for the USB port in the schematic. Now there's nothing significant in the USB connection that you need to know. But when I first got my hands on this board, I was wondering why there are interfaces for both USB and UART. Why are there uh, two serial connections? This was answered by reading the SimCom 7600 documentation. The 7600 can accept AT commands on either interface and perform data transfers over either interface. The USB port is set to suspend if it's not used within some period of time, and it becomes active again during certain wake-up events. In the WaveShare wiki, developers are instructed to set a pin of the Jetson Nano to high and then low to ensure that the WaveShare device is turned on. The following is a script that WaveShare provides for doing this. There's not much of an explanation given as to what's going on. 
Here, GPIO 200 leads to pin 31 on a Jepson Nano's 40 pin header. Pin 31 leads to the pin labeled D6 on the wave shear board. But what does D6 do? On a schematic, we find that D6 terminates at a header. Now, let's take a look at the actual board. There's a jumper that can either bridge D6 to the pin labeled PWR, or we can bridge the five volt uh, supply to PWR. In the above, since PWR and a five volt are connected, PWR will always be high, and pin 31 of the Jetson Nano is free for other purposes. If D6 and PWR are bridged, then the Jetson controls the power state of the board. The Simcom 7600 could go into a low power state for a number of reasons. This could include receiving command instructing the Simcom 7600 to go into a lower power state, or it could happen because of voltage fluctuations. Pulsing this line will wake the Simcom 7600 up. If we look a little deeper at, at the schematic, we find PWR does not go directly to the Simcom 7600. It passes through another circuit. The output of this circuit is labeled power key. It connects to the Simcom 7600 to a pin with a similar label. According to the documentation, connecting the power pin to ground will cause the unit to power up or wake up. Connecting it to a high signal will cause it to be powered off in a lower power state. Now, internally, this pin is already connected to a high signal with a resistor. So if we don't give any signal over this, the SIMCOM is going to be turned off. It's not until we give a low signal that the SIMCOM turns on. You could almost look at this as being like an inverter that's uh, controlling the power state. Now, there's another pin that's labeled flight mode, and it has a very similar circuit connected to it. Uh, one difference is that instead of an internal resistor, a uh, wave share is providing an external resistor. The flight mode circuit bridges pin 33 from the Jetson Nano's header to the Simcom's flight mode pin. And as you might have inferred, whenever this receives a high signal, then it will put the device into airplane mode, which turns off all of the radios. Only by having a low signal asserted over here will airplane mode be disabled and the device is able to use its radios. Now, there's a few other components in the schematic that don't involve any signaling with the Jetson Nano. Of course, there's a circuit to, that connects the uh, SIM card to the WaveShare, and so the Jetson Nano does not directly interface with that. And WaveShare has also supplied a circuit for interfacing with earphones and a microphone. To use this feature, you only need to connect a compatible headset to the jack on the board. Uh, there's three more interfaces uh, in the schematic for antennas of various types. Two of these antennas are self-explanatory. The GNSS connector is for the GPS antenna. The main connector is for the cellular antenna. Now there's a third antenna that is labeled AUX on the WaveShare board, and it's labeled, it's labeled as div ant on the schematic. While not strictly necessary, connecting an additional antenna here can enhance the 4G performance of the SIM 7600. So that covers a complete schematic for the WaveShare 7600 4G. Now this is one video in a series of videos that is on this specific accessory board. So if you want to see the other videos, be sure to check out my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash j2inet. I'll also be posting this information in text form on my blog at blog.j2i.net. And if you like this content and would like to see more content like it, be sure to like and subscribe. That actually helps out uh, more than you think. And you can also follow me on my other social media channels. Until next time.